glory to the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Dear students of the Proud of Agup class, welcome to the online Sunday School for this year, 2022, on behalf of the Marthama Sunday School Samajan. We're all so happy that you are a part of the Sunday School. It's really wonderful, no, that you have traversed the journey from nursery till Proud of Agup and continue to be so diligent in the Sunday School classes. Yes, indeed. I know you are all at a point in life, very crucial point in life, where you are taking up different professional courses. But still, you have the diligence to be a part of this Sunday School class and we are overjoyed and remember, heaven rejoices in this and you will be abundantly blessed. Let's take on the journey this year with Paul, the Ambassador of Christ. So beginning our lessons for the year 2022. Let's all look to the Lord in prayer. Father God, I praise you and I thank you for giving us this beautiful time where we could spend some time to learn more about you through the life of Apostle Paul. Bless each one of the children all over the world. We praise into your hands all your family members. Bless us and this time that you've given us that we may use it in the best possible way for the greater glorification of thy kingdom. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Welcome to the journey with Paul, the ambassador of Christ. The first lesson says, Paul, the unique person. Who is an ambassador? The one who represents. So Paul is so special that he represents the very life of Christ. And Paul is said to be unique. The first lesson says, unique. Who is unique? person who is special, who has something so different and set apart about him, isn't it? So the question is, what makes Paul unique? We have four points for you. First, that he is an eminent leader. In fact, the textbook says a preeminent leader. Secondly, he went through a wonderful transformation. Thirdly, he was a deep thinker. And of course, till date, he is the most idealistic missionary. Let's take a look at why he is known as the preeminent leader. What do you understand by preeminent leader? Eminent we know, somebody who is great, absolutely at the top. Preeminent, surpassing, much better, set apart, something so distinguished that he possesses. That is why he is known as a preeminent leader. So what are the qualities that make him a preeminent leader? He had extraordinary intelligence. He had excellent leadership qualities. And of course, he was a courageous idealist. Please note that we have James Stalker, the historian, who says that all other disciples were ordinary folk who became famous because of the Christianity effect. Whereas Paul had these qualities in him that even if Christianity did not happen, his name would have been written in golden letters in history. That was the ability of Paul. He had so much of great qualities in him that he would have become famous anyways. That is what makes him a preeminent leader. Remember the time when Christ was taken up into heaven, there were very few people who were actually followers of Christ. It says, the statistic says that around 40 lakhs Jews and there were only one in a 30,000 Christians at that time. But how did everything change and the number of Christians increase over the years in spite of the torture by Emperor Nero? Yes. Of course, many disciples have played their role, but it is said that the main and the most important agent of this kind of a change that happened is Apostle Paul and his leadership abilities. What is another important property or quality about Paul? He went through a wonderful transformation. All of us go through different transformations, but the speciality about Paul was he was dead against Christianity. He was an ardent follower of the Jewish religion. He was thorough in all the 
information, the liturgy and the scripture of the Jewish religion. And therefore, he was excellent in that. How come a person who was so sincere in the Jewish religion get into to be such a fantastic Christian? That is the transformation brought in by Jesus. It was a transformation that was sudden but permanent. He turned out to be a permanent and a sure Christian. A thorough metamorphosis that took place. This is the kind of transformation that Christ expects in our lives too. So if we note what the book has to say, Paul was a person who was deeply rooted in Jewish religion, dead against Christian faith. But the transformation that happened to him through Jesus was sudden but permanent. And once the radiance of Christ flowed through him, he was able to radiate the virtues of God, of virtues of Jesus so comfortably amongst everybody around him. Thus, Paul became a man of powerful individuality and strong conviction. Thirdly, Paul was a deep thinker. We people think a lot. I wake up in the morning and I think I should do this, I should do that. And then I wrap up myself and say, oh, it's okay, I can do it tomorrow. So we are people who live at a very superficial level. But Paul was very deep. Remember, he was very thorough with all the scripture. He was so sure about the life of Christ and he was so full of Christ in him. Therefore, his thoughts were very, very deep and his caliber was of a very high level. They say that it was the need of the time that a person with the caliber of Paul was needed at that moment of time in order to move people and help them to understand the principles, the life of the lifestyle of Jesus. So as a deep thinker, Paul was a leader of caliber who was absolutely necessary for that time. Paul had the ability, because he had the content knowledge, he had the ability to explain. You know, it is said that when Paul began to speak, people would just sit in awe and listen to him. That was his ability to speak. He could relate to the Jews who were highly knowledgeable. He could relate to the Gentiles who were not so knowledgeable at all. That was his ability. He could analyze any subject. He could present it in the best way possible. And for people who came to him and argued him regarding any facts about Christianity, he had so much of courage to defend all of it. Do we have this ability? Are we so thorough in our scripture? Are we so firm in our, firm in our faith that we are able to defend and speak for our Christ? Fourthly, Paul was an idealistic missionary. He was courageous, okay? He was able to think and he was also able to act. As I told you earlier, many of us have small, many thoughts in our mind, but we may not get those thoughts into realization. Whereas Paul, whatever he thought, he worked upon it. He had devotional thinking and he was courageous in his action. He was a thinker and a worker. It is only when thinking and action comes together, the mission of Christ works in reality. Otherwise, it's just in words and it just vanishes into thin air. So Paul was one of the greatest people who made salvation possible to the millions because he was able to bridge the gap between the Jews and the Gentiles because of his deep thinking and courageous action. Courageous he was also because he had many more special qualities. One, as I already told you, he was an educated orator. People can just speak without knowing the facts, but he was an educated orator. Therefore, he could argue or debate with any person who was thorough with the law. Next, he could speak smoothly. As I told you, he had the ability of communication. Very smoothly, very effectively, he could pass on the information to the people around him. 
Above all, he was ready to travel by land, across the sea, facing different kinds of dangers. We will be studying about all this in the days to come. But this courage is what is needed for him to be a great missionary and for all of us to look up to him as the most zealous and idealistic missionary, idealist missionary. And we should also be inspired that yes, I too should be able to get this element of strength, of conviction in me as I travel through Paul's life in, this, in these days of Sunday school. So dear children, these are the points that we have dwelt upon today. I hope, like Paul, we will be able to say, it is not me, but Christ that is living in me. As he said, let us also be able to say that with conviction in these days to come. So remember, Paul continues to remain as the greatest missionary of Christ. Let us all derive this zeal of Paul and grow closer to Christ as we journey together through the life of Apostle Paul in the days to come. This is my prayer for each one of you today. God bless you all. Amen.